So the Champions Cup Saturday games, few on uh, for this Saturday here in New Zealand. The time is um, pretty early in the morning for some of them, but I should be able to see at least some of these games. The first one, Bath against Toulouse. Uh, Bath at the minute, two wins, three losses and a draw in the Premiership. Toulouse, four wins, two losses and a draw themselves. So uh, neither side at the top of the table, but both doing fairly well. Uh, I guess Bath's 2-3-1 is not that fantastic. Uh, that being said, though, two of their recent losses were against Saracens and Exeter, so kind of the two unbeaten teams in the Premiership, so it kind of makes sense. Whereas Toulouse's recent one, I think, was over Agen, which is uh, a team kind of towards the foot of the top 14. Uh, for Bath, Falatau is out. Uh, Cook and the Singer is out. But Roberts is back, which is a good thing. And uh, Francois Lowe is obviously back from his time with the box, so kind of good news there. For uh, Toulouse, who've got apparently a fairly poor record against um, teams from the Premiership. Chisholm Colby is back, Kaino is at number 8, Mamoz is number 12, so it's a fair bit of talent in that team. So it looks to be a cracker of a match. Uh, bookies have got Bath by 3, so picking that one to be pretty tight. Uh, the next one, Montpellier against Edinburgh. Montpellier in the top 14 are two wins, four losses, and a draw. Edinburgh have split their record in the Pro 14, three wins and three losses. Uh, importantly, though, for Montpellier, Namani Dandolo is out. I think he's got to have surgery, so he's going to be out for a while. Husson is out, so Pinar is at 10. Uh, Pikamos is obviously captain. Uh, Edinburgh, first time they've been in the in the Champions Cup for a wee while from what I understand uh, and it's both Scottish teams in the Pro 14 for um, no Pro 14 in the Champions Cup for a while so uh, that's kind of good news for them uh, but yeah uh, Dougie Fife uh, is in on the wing because Duhan van der Merwe is out uh, Alan Dell's on the uh, light head light head loose head prop uh, Hickey is at 10 so it's going to be a tough ask for them. Uh, the bookies have got Montpellier by a whopping 14 points. Uh, the next game, Exeter, who are absolutely on fire in the Premiership, but don't have the best record in Europe, I guess that's fair to say, uh, against Munster, who also have split their results, three wins, three losses. Exeter undefeated, six wins in a row. Um, yeah, it's got, a, it's got a pretty good clash kind of written over it for this one. Uh, Witten and Slade are in the midfield for Exeter. Are uh, they going to go on a run in Europe uh, this season? It kind of remains to be seen. You know, converting that Premiership form into European form is not always that simple. Uh, for Munster, the coach, from what I've read, uh, Van Graan has been under a bit of pressure. So I guess it's an important game for them, looking to bounce back from a recent loss to, to these guys. So um, we'll see what they're able to do. It's not going to be made any easier by the fact that Conor Murray is still out. Albie Matthewson is, uh, is out. So uh, Duncan Williams starts at 9. I'm keen to see how Joey Carberry goes because uh, since his move to Munster, it's been interesting just to watch his development now that he's the number one guy. Uh, Exeter by 9 is what the bookies have got for this one. Uh, the next game, the Scarlets uh, are playing Racing 92. Uh, Scarlets, decent run so far. 4 wins and 2 losses in the Pro 14. Racing, 4 wins and 3 losses in the Top 14. So... Pretty kind of similar records so far. Importantly though for Scarlet is they've got no Reese Patchell. Uh, so Angus O'Brien gets the that job. Uh, Jonathan Davis is back, but there's no Fonatia or Uzak Kasim because both these guys are serving suspensions. Uh, for Racing 92, obviously you've got some pretty talented guys in that back line. You look at Zebo, uh, you got Finn Russell at 10. Um, and I'm also just keen to see how goes Camille Shark goes. Um, you know, in the front row because uh, I thought he did alright when he was here in New Zealand not that long ago. Uh, the bookies have got Scarlet's by three, so again, that's one that's picked to be uh, pretty tight. Last one, Ulster against Leicester. Uh, I should say, I forgot to mention, for these teams, uh, some of them, like uh, Munster and Exeter, are kind of towards the top end for the, for the overall comp. Uh, Edinburgh kind of towards the wrong end of um, odds for their chances of the overall competition. Montpellier is one of the favorites. Uh, Bath kind of towards the back end, Toulouse, uh, middle-ish. But Ulster and uh, Leicester are kind of well both towards the back end. So 
Uh, both these sides will probably be targeting this game as really almost like a must win. Ulster, three wins, two losses, and a draw in the Pro 14. Uh, obviously coming off one really big defeat uh, against Munster recently. Uh, Leicester, having fired their coach early on, that kind of made news waves even here in New Zealand. Uh, three wins, three losses. Uh, Ulster are boosted by having guys like Marcel Kutsia back. Lowry starts at 15. Uh, Tamua and Polotanao are back for Leicester, so that's kind of good news for them. But Johnny May is out, so that's not ideal. Uh, Ulster by two is what the bookies are saying. So, yeah. Finally get after the uh, the first game, just the one game on the Friday, we kind of get into the meat of things for the Saturday. Uh, as always, first time for me to be covering the, the Champions Cup, the Heineken Cup. So, um... Yeah, I'll definitely need some uh, some tips and some pointers as to who I should be looking out for uh, this weekend. I had some useful comments on the on the Friday video, so I appreciate that. But we'll see how these games go. How do you think the results are going to go? Um, let me know your thoughts, and um, yeah, I'll talk to you again soon. See you later.